Hello everyone, I'm Chris from MySpace. Um, yeah, as, as Kyle said, we don't have um, something for you to play with today, but what we did want to show you was the fact that because we're implementing open social, whatever you play with today will work on MySpace. Pretty straightforward. Um, so, so here, if you follow my mouse, um, I'd prefer to be up next to the screen, but we have a very short cable here. Uh, if you follow my mouse pointer, <laughs> um, so so I logged, so I got um, my favorite plugin down here, um, Firebug Open, and uh, so I'm in my profile page right now, and I'm just going to take you on a very very brief walkthrough of an example application. I apologize in advance for my Photoshop skills. You'll recognize some Photoshop uh, little doohickeys in there, so. So I'm in my profile page. Uh, I have my application installed. It's called Inhit Neomancy 3. Um, and then there's Robbie's app right there. Uh, so I go to my profile page. And I pray. <laughs> OK, so uh, the page rendered. And so what you see is, is just a standard MySpace profile. And then plugged in down here is um, the Inhypneomancy application. Uh, if you want to know what that means, uh, talk to me later. Um, I made up the word. It actually has, <laughs> has meaning behind it. Um, so what you'll see in Firebug here is this application initialized, and it called out to our uh, it called out to uh, api.msappspace.com. That's our jail domain. So we're doing the whole gadget implementations per spec. Uh, we have a separate domain where, where your application runs in an iframe uh, that's outside the MySpace domain that makes uh, your application very safe. Um, and then the response you see down here, so we're making a call for owner friends.json, uh, passing in an open social token, and what we get back is uh, JSON. <laughs> I'm sure everyone here is familiar with JSON. Um, and so what that, was happening, what that was doing behind the scenes was initializing the application and calling the uh, owner's data and the owner's friends. Uh, if you have questions about how the API is put together, um, we have uh, Paul Walker here, who's our architect for our APIs. Um, he can answer a lot of questions about implementation in there. So uh, very quickly, so, so what I wanted to do for this application was show how, kind of put myself in the, uh, in the shoes of a, of a third party developer. Uh, so I created a third party site called inhipneomancy.com. Um, and I actually created an application on that site. Um, I'll show you that in a second. Um, and so this application actually interacts both with open social data and uses the make request call to interact with a third party API. So that third party is hosted on inhipneomancy.com. So in this application, uh, you can just do a couple things. It's, it's sort of demoware application. Uh, though I will release it if anyone's interested in dream interpretation. Um, so, uh, dream before presentation. So, so I clicked on enter dream. This is just JavaScript interface. Um, couldn't sleep, so I didn't dream because I'm sick, but not contagious. Uh, I'm on <laughs> so I just uh, entered that dream. Um, that actually called out to, uh, this gives you a kind of flavor of what your calls out to your applications will look like. Um, so, so that call actually saved my dream back to my application through the open social make request call. Uh, so that called an msappspace.com slash relay.proxy. Um, so that the relay.proxy takes the call to inhipneomancy.com, uh, translates it, um, encodes it, as we know, and uh, from a bug earlier, and uh, sends it to uh, to inhipneomancy. Inhipneomancy then exposes a JSON endpoint, but whatever your code wants, whatever you want your format to be, obviously will be translated by the proxy. In this case, uh, I'm using JSON um, because why not? So. At that point, so you can view a dream. There we go. Couldn't sleep, so I didn't dream because I'm sick, not contagious. Uh, now you can interpret the dream. Um, yes. Interpretation added. 
This is my poor UI skills. I'm, I'm not really a UI person. Uh, so I just interpreted the dream. That also talked to my servers, uh, sent open social data to my application. Um, and so now my, uh, yeah, interacting with my data. So uh, the only other real piece of functionality there is uh, friend streams. Uh, this takes my friends list, which you'll see below. Uh, there's my friends. Um, they're interesting people. I don't know who that is. Um, and so that used the open social call for uh, owner underscore friends. And uh, it just iterated through them, sent them to my server. Um, and my server tracks just user IDs um, and, and grab the data. And so I just joined the open social data from MySpace with, uh, with a bunch of dreams. So like Paul just left a dream about his girlfriend. It now has one interpretation. Um, Donnie just left a dream about uh, 640k. Chris, me, and two horses, which is disturbing. Um, and Britney Spears, uh, I'm not sure what that's about. The scariest dream ever, Britney Spears was a role model. Wow. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's the application. Um, I'm going to take a brief, very brief uh, dive into the code behind the application. Um, and then, then I'm done, then you guys can start hacking away. Um, so this is, the, uh, this is the code behind the application. And one thing I wanted to foreground that I think is a particular architectural strength of open social is the fact that you can basically code your application however you want, and then you can plug in the open social stuff. For example, here on, um, on my Inhibiomancy site, I actually have the same application except without open social. And has friends streams, and you'll see my, my data stubs there. Friend ID equals two, friend ID equals three. Um, and then I just stubbed out my own objects in my application. So I just have like some, some uh, HTML in there. And then I have, uh, I have some stubbed out objects for like my user and everything like that. And I mean, this all works the way you might expect. And then I finally have a call uh, init that then calls populate user data. Uh, that's creating an open social new data request. Um, you guys have gone through that before. Um, and it's calling, uh, I just make a couple calls, fetch people request for owner friends, fetch person request for owner, and fetch person request for viewer, just in case uh, the owner and the viewer are different. So the viewer can come into someone else's profile and leave a dream for them. Uh, and I'll show up as the owner. And then I'm doing some, and so then I pass in a call back to data request send. Um, I check for errors. Um, if no errors happen, then I, I apologize for my JavaScript. Uh, it's really bad. But um, I'm, getting a, I'm getting the data back from the data response and the callback. And I'm using it to populate some global objects. I know it's bad code. Um, and I'm then using that, that data um, to, iter to actually create my, new, my own objects that wrap open social objects. So I have a user object that actually wraps the open social object. Um, and then I paint my UI in whatever way you might imagine I paint my UI. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty much it for the example application. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, let me know. Um, there's a bunch of us here. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess the key point to all of this is that uh, you write open social code, it works in MySpace. Um, Can you talk a little bit about your server? Uh, sure. OAuth implementation. Uh, yes, I can tell you that my server it does not implement OAuth. Sorry. <laughs> so actually, but uh, it, it will be required. Yes. Yeah. yeah. His third-party server doesn't implement OAuth, but our proxy, um, which I wanted to announce, like if any of, I'm not sure if any of you third-party developers have set up your um, uh, servers to accept digitally signed OAuth uh, requests, but I'm prepared to test it if you are using um, our actual proxy implementation. So um, somebody in the world has a server that's capable of taking so an OAuth call? We, we, we have a server that's capable of taking an OAuth call as well if you would like to uh, test both uh, making an OAuth request and we have a test tool for sending out an OAuth request if you would like to test receiving a request. So if anyone's interested in that, actually set up an application with a couple of dummy user IDs um, for some resource calls for server to server for 
uh, your outgoing calls. And uh, again, um, if you want to give me some URLs, uh, I can I can make some uh, request some signed requests uh, to your servers as well. Um, just see me. I have like uh, an email, a uh, little page that I can uh, send to your email address with the information um, to uh, test uh, after tonight as well. Yeah, I know, add something I'm too. about to plug in the OAuth stuff for this server as well, and I'm going to release the source code as, as an example so, for that too. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and ju just to make clear, the, per the my, my purpose with this is simply to, to test OAuth digital signing, which is uh, with which is uh, the what Open Social Committee has committed to um, uh, in, for your secure phone home calls. Um, additionally, when the Open Social Committee gets to uh, defining server-to-server uh, -server APIs, uh, the OAuth will be the digital signing uh, mechanism that uh, the Open Social Committee supports. And um, the purpose is not to posit our uh, REST APIs in case Graham is concerned. As, <laughs> as the, uh, <laughs> as the uh, open social way that we have, restful way, et cetera. Okay. So thank you for saying that, but that was my concern. Well, all I wanted to say is that if, when we say OAuth, all we really mean is that the parameters sent through the proxy call from your gadget to your third party server, they're just signed. So you can actually ignore the signature if you want, and it's just a normal HTTP REST call to your server. The purpose of the signature is so that if you depend on the viewer ID, the owner ID, the app ID, those things can be forged by the gadget, by a malicious user with Firebug. So signing lets you validate that. But you can definitely get started without having to think about it a lot at all. 